at seminars, people who notice I kind of grab the hand a little differently than a lot of people are used to when doing uh, outside wrist twist or what's called somokuki in Korean or kotagaish in Japanese. Right? A lot of times people will grab the thenar eminence um, like this to do the technique, whether cross or open. I don't normally do that for this technique. I normally put my finger, my index finger in the wrist crease and my thumb on the back of the hand. There's a few reasons why I do that. One, the strength of the grip. If I grab like this, grabbing the thenar eminence, the meaty part of the thumb, the chicken bone, <laughs> and I grab the other side, and he pulls down really hard, he can come out relatively easy. And then if there's sweat involved, then you've got added issue. But now if I grab like this, and he pulls straight down, if you notice, it's a whole lot different. All right? So it's a lot stronger. Reason why is that I've got the bones right here stopping that downward movement when he pulls out. Okay, like that. All right? Second reason why is that I don't have to see him or the hand in order to pull the technique off. I'm using body landmarks. Those bones again come in handy just by me sliding down into them and every time I am right in position. All right? If I can touch his arm, I can slide into this lock or into that hand position. So that's the second reason. So when I slide down, if I did it the other way, there's a good possibility I slide right past it, like so. Right? I have to be very conscious of where I stop, but when I go against the bones of the wrist, of the hand, I have to be less cautious because it stops on its own. Go for the thenar eminence, higher chance of slipping off, go by the bones and the body landmarks, lower percentage of slipping off and a higher percentage of grabbing your target. The one other thing I like about this grip is that it doesn't matter if his hand is open or closed. Closed. If it's in a fist, I don't care. If I do this, it makes it much more difficult to pull this technique off. But if I'm here, it doesn't matter. Well, it does matter a little bit. But it matters a whole lot less than if I'm grabbing like this, right? Here, I've got that pull and that push. So if I'm here, boom, and he makes a fist, that's fine. I still pull this off. One of the things people have said, well, if you put your finger in the wrist crease, that kind of braces the wrist. Well, that, that's true to a point, but not really what I'm trying to accomplish. So if a lot of times what people will do with this technique is they'll actually try to push the palm to the ground, right? By pushing the palm to the ground, you're actually using strength and you're merely trying to compress the wrist like that. That's not what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to rotate the whole thing to lock up the skeletal structure. So if I do this technique here, right, and I get into this position and I push straight down palm to ground, he can resist that. Right? I can jump on that bad boy, and that's really nice, but really, watch how little effort it is when I do this, when I pull and I push. So resist. It's not necessarily extra pain, it's just I'm taking his structure. Oh, that's good. Here, I'm putting it in a bad position as it is now. What I'm doing is taking his arm and doing this with it. You see that? I'm taking the whole arm, I'm not just moving the wrist. So here, here, when I get in this position, I'm pulling here, pushing here, that puts him down. So whether he hurts or not, pain is a bonus. So whether he feels pain or not, I don't care. I'm just locking up the structure to put him down. Then from here, do whatever you want to him. So hopefully that helps and explains why I grab the wrist the way I do. Thank you. Thank you, sir.